Hey there, I'm Dan Martell, serial entrepreneur, investor, and creator of SaaS Academy. In this video, I'm super pumped to share with you how to find pains that you can easily solve using a SaaS solution. If you've ever had the inspiration, if you're SaaS curious, maybe you have a product you're working on now, but you don't feel like it's working, I'm gonna share with you guys the strategies that I've used to find and identify the perfect solutions to build to scale a software company. I've done it five times. And be sure to stay at the end where I'm gonna tell you how to get access to my exclusive free mini course called The Idea to Exit Mini Course, pretty straightforward. And it literally is gonna teach you the whole process to get through that. Let's get started. So the other day I was in the Scaling SaaS Founders Facebook group, it's a free Facebook group that I run and manage to help other software entrepreneurs to scale their business. And somebody asked me the question, how do I find a problem or a solution that would be perfect to solve with a software product? Now here's the deal. If you don't know what SaaS stands for, it stands for software as a service. It's the software, it's the tool. It's easier said than done. So I'm gonna teach you today how I've been able to identify key problems in the market and solve them to generate revenue and scale those businesses. The last three I've actually exited. I feel super lucky to have done that. Um, and it wasn't easy, I'm not gonna say it's easy, but I think there's definitely a process that I wasn't really conscious about that I was using that I'm gonna share with you guys today to look at markets, identify opportunities, and figure out what could potentially be a great SaaS solution. It's the same conversation I've had with so many of my friends that run agency business. So if you have an agency business and you wanna make the migration to SaaS, this is the video for you. Strategy number one, spreadsheets. It might sound weird, but if you have the ability to go look at people's work life and ask them to show you spreadsheets that they use to manage their workflow, you will see incredible opportunities for potentially building a software solution to increase that workflow, workflow throughput. But here's the deal. Some people use worksheets because they're cheap. They actually don't want to pay for the software that already exists. So don't be disillusioned that there's potentially already a solution out there for that workflow just because somebody created a worksheet, all right? One of my favorite tools is Airtable. Airtable feel has more workflowy type solutions. And I've seen so many people use work, uh, Airtable to solve their workflow problems that are either existing SaaS businesses and maybe there's something unique about their workflow, a specific niche or vertical or, or industry that you can decide to kind of dive into. One of my favorite example is my friend Laura. She built a software uh, called Edgar, so meetedgar.com. And she built it because she was teaching people how to manage their social media posting schedule and, and documenting all their content and their historical content and creating a very simple way to get that published and realized that this was absolutely a software product that needed to exist. Now Edgar is a multi-million dollar business because it started with a spreadsheet template that she was teaching her clients. So go find those spreadsheets for ideas. Number two, your own pain. Uh, or pains, really. I mean, at the end of the day, I think that it's the entrepreneurial muscle to feel friction in the world and want to solve it using software. My companies are great examples of that. My company, Spheric, that I started back in the day when I was 24, I literally started it because I wanted to work with world-class people, which sounds crazy, but I built a whole company just so I could work with smart technical talent. Okay, I was an engineer, a software developer. I just wanted to be around other people. The customers just finance literally the people I spent my time with every day. Okay, so that was the first company. Second one was Flowtown. It was a social marketing application. And I built it because my brother who was in the home building, uh, he's a home builder, he, want, he didn't believe that his customers were on social media. And that was the first thing that I built to show him. And I realized it's like, there's a lot of small businesses that aren't using social. This is 2009 for those that you know are a little young. Um, back then, Twitter was really a new thing. And a lot of these new platforms were coming online. So people were arguing with me like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't think that my customers are there. So that was Flowtown. And then uh, more recently, even though I exited about five years ago now, Clarity.fm, Clarity was a marketplace so that entrepreneurs could get advice from other entrepreneurs. If you know me, you've ever met me, I absolutely love talking about business. I love supporting the entrepreneurial journey. 
and I wanted to create a tool for myself that allowed me to be more available to those that needed me most, especially if people have been following me on Twitter, on Facebook, on different social platforms. And doing that, solving that problem, I realized there was a huge opportunity to unlock all of this knowledge in the world to make it available for you. And that was clarity.fm. And the work I do now as a coach, same thing. There's no software behind it, it's me, but I love doing it. But to me, solving your own pain means that typically you have domain expertise, meaning you know the industry, you know the market, which gives you an unfair advantage. Um, you understand the customer pain point, the voice of the customer, so you can really work backwards from the value that they need to, uh, to, to want to pay for the solution. So having a high, what's called willingness to pay. So I just think your own pains and building that muscle for frustrations and frictions in the world. If you look at the origin story of all your favorite tools that you use, consumer or business, um, they usually start by the entrepreneur solving their own pain. Number three, custom solutions. So, Again, you're gonna have to do some research, but here's how this one works. There are companies out there called custom development shops, system integrators, dev shops, uh, consultants, if you want a technical consultants, and all they do is write code to solve business problems for existing companies, okay? So all these companies have uh, logistic issues, reporting needs, whatever it is, and they hire development companies in, in the, in the, at the enterprise level, you got like IBM Global Services, Tata Consulting, um, Infosys, you have all these, I mean, these are billion dollar companies, and all they do is, for the most part, is that, not all they do, but they provide development resources for companies to build custom solutions. So, if you can talk to somebody in the IT department of a bigger company and ask them the question, hey, have you guys ever hired a contractor or development firm, et cetera, to build you a custom solution? And they say yes, say, hey, I'm just curious, what, what problem did it solve for you? Here's what you're looking for, because I'm gonna tell you, all of these um, you know, development shops, would love to build a SaaS product to become the next Salesforce or Box.net or you know Slack, but they it's literally two different business models. It's really tough to have one foot in custom development and another foot in pure software, okay? But where the opportunity is for you is to find another company that's already building the code base, they have the code base, they have maybe five or six reference customers because they've been reusing the code base, and you can like extract it from that company and actually bring it to market. So all of a sudden now you're partnered with them to bring it to market. I did this recently with a friend of mine. I had uh, a coaching client who had a dev, uh, they have a, um, a healthcare development agency, but they built this other technology for their team. We pulled it out. I partnered with another friend who became the CEO of it. I put some money into it and now it's a separate business that we're all partners in. Okay, so this happens all the time. If you're an entrepreneur, you're driven and you're willing to put some time in, trust me, there are so many dev shops that have software type solutions that they just need the leader, the, the sometimes you know the, the product manager, the, the general manager to, to run with that. Uber's a great example. If you don't know the quick story of Uber, uh, Travis Kalanick, who is the founder and CEO with Garrett Camp, uh, Travis was an investor in my company, Flowtown and he had just sold his company, Red Swoosh. He had came up with the idea with Garrett around Uber, and it was like MVP, first version was like super like simple, and he just needed somebody to run it, and he tweeted out, does anybody wanna potentially be the GM to my next side hustle? And Ryan, one of my good friends, replied to him on Twitter and said, you found your guy, flew to San Francisco, Short story long, uh, but no, fast forwarding to today, Ryan is a billionaire, he's an amazing dude, he got 10% of the company, he ran Uber as COO for all the last, you know, almost decade, and that's an example of people always looking to have t technology that wanna find the person to lead it, and that could be you, which could be huge. So, you know, custom solutions is an incredible area for you to extract a pain and have the solution already coded up 70, 80% done for you to run with. Number four, trends. So this is one of my favorite things. You know, one of my mentors, a guy named Ken Nickerson said to me, he said, you know, Dan, if you just find a trend in the market that's growing, even if you're mediocre, you'll do good because high tide rise all boats. And he said, if you're good, which he, you know, he said, you're good, um, you'll do great. 
And that's why like when I look at the history of everything I've done from Flowtown with social media in, in 2009 to Clarity with marketplaces and mobile, um, I've always tried to figure out what's the trend in regards to the solution I wanna solve that I can kind of be part of. But if I was starting from scratch, if you're looking for a pain in the market, here's what I've discovered, history, uh, some people say it doesn't repeat itself, it just rhymes. I think it definitely repeats itself. And what I've discovered is every existing business tool today, from logistic management, shipping management, CRM, Salesforce automation, et cetera, uh, email marketing automation, text, like whatever the existing solution in the market is today, as there is a trend, if you wanna talk about Bitcoin, you wanna talk about drones, you wanna talk about 3D printing, you go Google top technology trends for the year and you will find all of them. Um, there is going to be a, a point specific solution for that. So there's gonna be a CRM for drones. There's gonna be an inventory management system for drones. There's going to be a sales partner management solution for drones. And the cool part about doing this is you gotta be careful to not be too early, but a lot of those will be already vetted. And, and as I said, they're the biggest trends of the, the world right now, is by building a solution specific for that industry, you do two things. One, you draft with their growth as the industry grows. Some of them are growing 25% per year. If you grow 25% per year, just so you know, you double every three years, okay? Because it's compounding. So there's you get the drafting effect of that growth and you become an incredibly well positioned company to potentially be acquired by the existing incumbents. Or you can keep building the company, bring it public and be incredibly wealthy. Regardless, finding existing industry trends, looking at the existing tool set that exists in that market for uh, laggards or, or old school versions of that and building the modern version is a powerful way for you to build uh, a solution in the software space on an existing trend. So there's, and there's pain there because it's so new. A lot of these people are trying to put together spreadsheets. See where I'm going with this? It is all connected, all four of these. Let's do a quick recap. Number one, spreadsheets. You gotta find people solving the problem themselves. Number two, your own pain, so you have domain experience. Number three, custom solutions, because people have already paid to solve those problems. And four, find an industry trend you can draft against. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, I wanna share with you a free resource called the Idea to Exit mini course. You can click the link below to get access to that, but if you wanna learn how to do no cost product development, build a marketing growth engine, and figure out how to fund your team using customer financing, I cover all of that. It's a free course, it's three parts. You don't have to wait to watch the second and third part. It's all in there and that is my gift to you. As per usual, if you found this video useful, please smash that like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new here. And as per usual, I wanna challenge you to live a bigger life and a bigger business, and I'll see you next Monday.